Welcome to Doctors Rating Trends. Today we are going to talk about hot tubs. My name is Jackson Jones. I'm an orthopedic surgeon that's been in clinical practice for about 10 years. And this is my brother. I'm Jess Jones. I have an MD and then went on to the venture capital world where I called bullshit on trends for a living. And uh, so we're going to be taking a look at the hot tub health trend today and see if it's worthwhile. Figured now because it's ski season, this would be a good topic. Uh, we're all getting into hot tubs, and then if you um, if you try and intellectualize it when you're in the hot tub, people will try and rationalize excessive hot tubbing with uh, saying that it's healthy. Other people say that it's dangerous. So we figured we'd take a deep dive on this and uh, see what the literature shows. The big question is hot tubbing, is it healthy? Um, we're going to specifically just look at the hot tubbing itself. Obviously, a lot of the activities that come with the hot tub uh, don't necessarily lend themselves to health, and we can cover those in later videos. One of the things that we should look at with hot tubs are the cardiovascular effects of the hot tub. So when you get into a hot tub, there's a few changes that happen in the body. Number one is your heart rate goes up. And... With the heart rate, there's also a vasodilation, which means all of your blood vessels expand in the hot water. And what that does is bring your blood pressure down. And between those two things, you get an increase in cardiac output. So with the lower blood pressure, that means there's more flow of the blood. And then the increased heart rate, you're getting a lot more circulation going through your body with the, uh, when you're submer submerged in hot water. So this led to people wanting to study this. Um, again, there are not a lot of studies out there specifically looking at hot tubs. A lot of the small studies and observations that are out there, they will look back at, at saunas, which we'll cover in another video, which have been quite a, um, extensively studied. And they inferred from the saunas where you're getting a, a periodic exposure to hot temperatures that these were healthy. And there are studies, including a Finnish study, which showed that all-cause mortality and cardiovascular-related mortality was decreased with increased sauna use. And then that was inferred over to hot tubs. What we can say with the few studies that do exist um, is that there are some benefits that they've found. There was one study that looked at 20 sedentary subjects and what they did is they had them hot tub for one hour, four to five times a week for eight weeks. And then they looked at the results afterwards and what they found was a significant decrease in blood pressure. They looked at arterial thickness and showed that this actually decreased as well. And then increased ability to dilate the vessels um, was also observed. And this, the effects that they found were comparable to if they taken those 20 sedentary subjects and put them through an exercise regime. And so it was inferred that if people have injuries that won't allow them to exercise or, or um, they're just sedentary and they, you can't get them to exercise, one of the things that could have some health benefits is getting them in, into a hot tub on a regular basis. Most of the other studies that exist are pretty low quality observational studies. I'll give the example. They took eight patients. Um, they put them in a hot tub for 30 minutes, uh, six days a week for three weeks, and they found that they had they slept better after the hot tub and they had a better sense of well-being. A lot of other studies just had these same observational um, low quality, low number of patients. Uh, uh, constructs to them so they're pretty easy to disregard but I will say the one study regarding the sedentary subjects was a pretty darn good one so there is a potential upside to, um, to hot tubs in terms of uh, your general health. So what is the downside of a hot tub and there's a couple of things that really stand out one is the lack of accountability that goes uh, on the undersurface of, uh, of a hot tub, especially when you get the bubbles going, you have no idea what people are doing under there. It relaxes everything. It turns into a pee pool if there are any kids involved. And so first of all, just the human factor is, is a big problem. Number two, and honestly, the big one that everyone talks about is diseases. So it is a cauldron of 
uh, disease and germs if it is not controlled. And so unless people are being hypervigilant and putting a lot of chemicals into these hot tubs, they are a carrier for things like cryptosporidium, Legionella, uh, a variety of different diseases out there. According to the CDC and the people who keep track of these things over a 14 year period, I guess that's a 15 year period, there's been 27,000 infections and eight deaths. When you think about the number of people using hot tubs, it's actually not all that much because there's millions and millions of hours and maybe even billions of hours that went into generating those numbers with uh, you know probably hundreds of millions of people. And uh, so then, we're gonna take another look at rashes here in the next slide. But before that, I'm gonna throw out a quick point which people wonder about, which is pregnant uh, women. Are they uh, at risk? Is this something that a pregnant woman should do? And you hear that they shouldn't. And the reason for that is the really hot temperatures, if you have an extended period of hyperthermia that extends through the, uh, through the womb and to the developing baby, uh, it can actually cause some neurological problems. So the neurological factors that swim around and make sure that the brain works and is attached to the spine the right way may not happen the way that they should. And so you get some weird diseases like spinal bifida and things like that that are shown to be a higher frequency in hot tub users. So for the nine months that you're pregnant, it's probably a good idea to avoid the hot tub. Granted, before you know that you're pregnant, there's not much you can do about that. But when the proteins start migrating around in little babies, uh, you should probably avoid it for those nine months. And then finally, going back to diseases, there's a disease called pseudomonas that causes rashes. And on the next slide, you can see what those rashes look like. So as much fun as you're having in there, when you come out like this uh, the other day or the next day or maybe even later in the day, you start looking like that, assuming that the only activity that we have to worry about is just sitting in the hot tub. It's a pretty good idea that it's pseudomonas that's happening. If those bumps are a little bit lower, uh, it may be something else, uh, but that goes uh, speaks to other activities. And no, you can't avoid those kinds of bumps in the hot tub. So that's all I got to say about the negatives. It's really just human accountability and diseases if it's poorly controlled. Uh, and then in older people, if there's some, you know, sort of a heat effect, maybe they get a little bit woozy in the hot tub. So take it to the scorecard. So in terms of, is it healthy? A uh, lot of the health benefits people talk about in terms of feeling of well-being, helping your sleep, um, that, that made sense in a hot tub. It's a relaxing environment. Um, I, I thought a plus uh, was finding out that there are actual cardiovascular benefits. Uh, it can mimic a little bit of exercise for you. Uh, it didn't sound like it was that significant, but for people that don't get any exercise, there, there might be a, uh, a little bit of extra with that. So um, in terms of common sense, the exercise part didn't really play into the common sense end of things, but, um, but the relaxation did. So I'll give it a check mark. Same thing on the common sense. If you've gone into a hot tub, it definitely helps with your sleep. You can, you know, it, it makes sense that it would relax you. And God knows that stress is the, the great killer of human beings. In terms of evidence, not much evidence one way or the other. Just starting a lot of studies on there. The little bit of evidence that is out there um, looked like it was fairly well done, at least with the one study that I read. Um, the other evidence that people point to the benefits of hot tub with or are vetted out with other types of heat therapy like saunas and and things along those lines um, and that's a fair about a bit more extensive and you could potentially say it extrapolates over to hot tub so um, there is some evidence and got a check mark for that on the solid evidence side for the downside uh, it gets check marked because the downsides are very well described it's really just a matter of infections and uh the cause and effect piece of that is uh you know pretty irrefutable for the most part so solid evidence on the downside you can feel it you can see it you can pick at it and uh so that definitely gets a check mark and then that moves into would i do it yeah absolutely it's great feels wonderful. Um, I don't think that it's uh, changing my life for better or worse, but uh, gosh, uh, you know, it feels great with a drink in my hand at the end of the day. 
can't imagine yeah. doing Aspen or Park City without a hot tub. So you just, uh, it's an accessory to, uh, to the winter lifestyle. Got to keep it. I think, uh, I think that'll do it. Uh, if you're pregnant, don't do it. If you're worried about infections, don't do it. Uh, and otherwise, uh, have a good time. Don't stay there too long. Drink lots of fluids. Uh, and just please don't pee in the hot tub. And uh, if you're fat and lazy, this, this, uh, this might be your workout for the day. We'll see you later. Bye.